All right, everyone. Before we begin, I want to lay down one ground rule. Is that during this review, we do not mention that that shall not be named. But the only movie that Chris O'Donnell's known for? No. The Arnold Schwarzenegger ice puns? No. I mean... What did you say? Did I just hear that credit card? Welcome, everyone, to the Nirvana Podcast, where, if, yes, we, where we go through everything geeky and nerdy, and, well, we last month we decided uh, to try to torture ourselves with a bad movie, and, well, I think maybe some of us might have bit it off more than we can chew, because today we are going to, oh, hi! Hi. I had to bash my head against the washing machine to forget the insult that I just heard. Okay. How's the bay, Reddit card bay? Yeah, that. Let's let's just go with <laughs> Let's just go with that. How's the washing machine? It's got a a, a human sized dent in it now. That's all right. I need a new one anyways. Okay. Oh, I'm good. All right. Well, today on the Nirvana Podcast, we are going to be talking at the 1997 Bat Bomb at the, that at the time was the worst comic book movie ever made, and that is Batman and Robin. That's right there in that little, cor in that little are corner. Are you sure about it being worse than Shaq? Or not Shaq, Steel? Steel? Uh, at the time, I, like I said, at the time, it was considered the worst comic book movie ever made. So This yeah, is what people wh think of when they don't I mean, like comic book movies. I, I mean, I, I'm not trying to defend it here, but I mean, I'm pretty sure Steel came out before this, so debatable. Well, I guess because because uh, Batman and Robin, that, that was technically a legacy film, like so, like so many others. I... Uh, it is the second and last in in a line of movies that's considered the Burton Schumacher universe that started with Batman 1989, which which of course led to the creation of one of the greatest card animated series of all time, Batman the Animated Series, and the, along with along with its sequel that was apparent that was too that was uh, that was very dark, Batman Returns. Some some would actually call it a Christmas movie. Hey Ian, that might be something we can we can talk about on Christmas. Aww. Okay. Hmm. That's hi cheese. Hey cheesy wing wings. You don't want to be here, cheese. We're gonna talk about some horrible evils. We while but, you can, buddy. Okay, Abernathy, Darwin Dunlap, or ADD, get back on the screen. Hey, hey, hey. The audience love cats. Yes. I do. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with that. 
Alright, so first two movies were directed by Tim Burton, who, who, who we, who we as kids, we all know from, like, from either Beetlejuice, Nightmare on Elm Street, Frank and Weenie, and Wait, others. Nightmare on Elm Street? Did I say Nightmare on Elm Street? I mean the Nightmare Before Christmas. Boy, <laughs> that would have been... <laughs> Dude, dude, I'm never gonna let you live this down. Just, just... <laughs> mm. <laughs> How dare you disrespect Wes Craven like that? Uh, speaking of, well, speaking of disrespect, I think I think we should also say we should also bring up the fact that uh, last year uh, Joel Schumacher did die, and uh, don't so uh, not, but uh, not to worry. It wasn't from COVID. It was from the other big C. It was it was from oh, cancer. Oh, oh I was, I was like, going somewhere completely different. I was gonna say, are we really? gonna start wiping out the word cancer because no i just wanted to say the big c because you know you he died in 2020 what do you think is gonna i mean what are you mm. gonna assume that he died that he died of in 2020 true Chlamydia? what Chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay just a reminder yes this is not it's just a reminder. This is not something meant meant for kids. And if you hear and if you hear a word, uh, do not ask your parents because you'll only get because you'll only get the answer. I'll tell you when you're older. Yeah, and, uh, this podcast is PG thirteen. <laughs> when it when it wants to be. Yeah, when it oh, wants to be. All right. Well, any well anyway, Batman and Robin was actually the was actually the last uh, movie that uh, t that. Uh, in the the last Batman movie that Schumacher ever directed, uh, the one before it, Batman Forever, I actually have no complaints about it. It was actually the first uh, Batman movie I saw in theaters. Honestly, uh, I enjoyed Batman Forever. Though, okay, okay, if, if I may, because I do have this one nagging thing I needed. Okay. I wish I could ask the actors. Like, I, I just would love to ask the actors, like, so I know you agree to, to be in these these four movies, but I have to imagine, like, Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, you know, waking up, looking outside her window, seeing the, the dark, gothic Gotham City, and then waking up the next day and seeing Neon Lights, the future! <laughs> And looking at their master Bruce, and then see that he's a different Bruce, and they're like, yeah, "I'm fine with this." I mean, uh, I guess this. Yeah, I think the Schumacher movies is the one that took the other Darren to a whole new level. Yeah, I mean, I mean, wow, you could argue that apparently, uh, Joe Schumacher was doing the multiverse before DC decided to do the multiverse yeah, on maybe. film. Oh boy, that'd be something. That'd be something. Uh, I mean, it, Tim Burton was at least consistent. He had one Bruce. <laughs> and Joe went through two. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get back on track. All right. Jim. All right. Uh, it's pretty easy to. T it's pretty easy to tell that uh, Tyler and I we kind of grew up. We kind of grew up when this came out. So we pretty much saw this when we were kids. Ian, though. Since you are the youngest of the group, I was actually more surprised by your re your uh, message to me on Facebook on Facebook <laughs> after you saw it. It was let's see, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I assume yeah. you had just seen it. Yeah, that, this was the first time I watched it. I don't know. I still don't know what to say. <laughs> it's, um, this is a movie. <laughs> it's a, it's a comic book movie. And I think that's kind of, I think that's the best way to describe it. This is a movie that feels very comic booky. No, no, no. Rephrasing this. It's your typical 90s comic book movie. Okay. All right, so it stars George Co George Clooney. I'm pretty sure just fresh off of his success with with ER. Uh, yep. Let's see the the master of one liners himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mister Freeze. 
Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman. Uh, Poison Ivy. Uma Thurman has poison has poison ivy. And it's, it's a shame they couldn't give her a katana. Uh, yeah. That's, but hey, that's, that katana saved her career. No no kidding. As well as the adrenaline as well as the adrenaline shot. <laughs> yeah. Chris, o Chris O'Donnell in well in the cy cider house rules, but I don't know how many people have seen that. I haven't even seen it. I just know it's a I thing. Honestly, I honestly thought he just vanished off the face of the earth. Yeah, although it, although I do, he did appear once. He was like an eclipse, or or like Haley's comet. And the movie he showed up in, Cats and Dogs Two: The Revenge of Kitty Galore. Serious? I'm serious. That's out of left field. Mm-hmm. And to, who played who played Bane? Who played uh, I don't da, 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 I don't really know. And of course Alicia Silverstone. Uh, another I think that's her only acting credential here. No, she was in others, but I think she was in Blast from the Past with another another actor who dropped off the face of the earth, Brendan Fraser. Uh, she, Alicia no. Silverstone made her they, debut in the, oh god the erotic thriller the crush in 1993 and that's all that's on here uh, as far as who played bane robert swenson don't recognize him don't reckon nap i don't either robert Ag alexander jeep swenson jr was an american professional wrestler stuntman and actor ah professional wrestler Makes sense. He doesn't say too much. I think we'll probably get to that because. Uh, oh, 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 we will rip this movie apart. Trust okay. me. Yeah. All right. Well, I kind of want to go on record, and you guys are gonna kind of call me crazy for this. But when I rewatched this, when I rewatched this uh, last week in preparation for the review, I had fun. I honestly, oh, yeah. I, I honestly think I would watch it again. Honestly, after seeing people rip on it, how can you not have fun? I, it's still fun to rip it apart. It's it, one of those movies where you get together with friends, get drunk, and watch it. Get drunk, you you, you laugh at cool. you laugh at some of the little things, and you and you try to and you come up with something to try to make someone else laugh. I mean, don't make this a drinking game because all those oh, ice puns will kill you. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, to really put it in perspective, 1997, that was a very long time ago. And uh, over the course of my career and hobby, I have seen much worse. Oh, oh yeah, sure. same here. I mean, it's not the top of crap. Let's it's, be honest here. It's not but, the cream of the crap. But for a comic <laughs> book movie, hell? for a comic book movie, it might as well be cream of the crap. And, yeah, maybe, maybe, but honestly, I kind of do find I do find it enjoyable in how pretty in how Batman started so high and then f fell, only to rise again, and then get and then get chopped up and then get kind of chopped up in a in a haphazardly put together movie to start start a cinematic universe. But then he resurrected again by an uncut Snyder version. Mm-hmm. A four-hour one, which I have not seen yet. I'm waiting until Go I'm waiting until Godzilla vs. Kong come out, so I can do my do my uh, free HBO trial. Uh huh. And but anyway, gentlemen, what do you think of Batman and Robin? Honestly, apathy. I At please explain. It felt like I was going through a very boring movie. <laughs> a boring movie that I can make fun of without little effort. Because, hey, you know what happens when you're a kid that knows nothing? You think it's amazing. You know what happens when you grow up 20 years later, having read all those comic books, having known all the knowledge of the Batman verse, all the villains and everything? 
you suddenly realize how crap it is. <laughs> because there's no way ever that Bane would be a henchman. Ever. <laughs> there's no way Poison Ivy would ever work with Mr. Freeze. How would that even work? What? Mr. Freeze wants to freeze half the, the whole planet. She wants the whole planet covered with, with plants. I'm pretty sure they're enemies by default. Lichen. <laughs> lichen Lichens. and moss. <laughs> lichen and moss. With so many contrived conveniences. Hey, Alfred, you got this disease. Oh no. But hey, Mr. Breeze, you might have the answer because your wife has it too. <laughs> and let's uh, not forget, apparently, ra- ra- was it Rackin Bass has to be in this? Rankin Bass. Oh, really? right. Yeah, it took me it took me years to figure out to find out uh, that was that was what uh, special that was that was on. <laughs> and so, watching it again, I couldn't even feel angry. I just felt apathy and just pity <laughs> because I'm like. I'm sure Joe tried his best to make this entertaining for kids, and who knows, this was probably meant for because he grew up with 60s Batman Adam West, which it does feel like. Oh, absolutely. It does. With all the colors and the campiness and the one-liners. Gee, Wilker, Batman, what will we do? Chris O'Donnell did not do that well. No, <laughs> no, no. Ah. But, but... What what can I say? It's interesting. Uh, yeah, well, well, we'll we'll elaborate on that later. Let's let's give the floor to Ian on what he on what he thought of it. Uh, you know comic books, Ian. <laughs> you know no. Bat, Do you know Batman, Ian? I know the basics. Define basics. The basic stuff that you generally get from watching YouTube videos. I know I mean, the basic talking- story. I don't know the the in-depth lore. Um, my main issue comes from the freaking writing. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure we all have the problems writing. Yes. This, I, now, this is this movie came out a year before I was born, give or take. Right? When 97. It yeah, it came out over a year before I was born. This, from what I gather, this is the most 90s thing I've ever freaking seen, and not in a good way either. <laughs> Please, I mean, allow me. Do I, would I like have to? Hear. to? Oh, 90s. Oh, yes. 90- <laughs> The night, I think I can kind of understand what is the first the first scene kind of feels a little 90s why are there snowboards and why does he what the uh, I forget his name what does Dick Grayson say when he this gets on the bro- snowboard cowabunga I hate it so much. <laughs> that t- that hearing that took me okay, okay, right to the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> hey, as a kid, I thought that was awesome because I was like turtles. I just thought it was. I thought it was awesome because oh my god, they're surfing in the sky. This reminds right. me of Power Rangers. But hey, let me let's break some lowdowns here. Um, Ian, you know why? As a kid, I thought this was amazing. Hey, John, did you see those toys they were selling? Yeah, brought up the toys. Uh, oh, gosh. Brought up the toys. The toys. You know, those Batmobiles, those uh, toy action figurines. The action. This movie was pretty much nothing more than a bit than a, an overbloated toy commercial. In fact, yeah. and this is why we need to pay give just a little cut cut uh, Mr. Schumacher, may he rest in peace, just a little bit of slack because not only did he kind of apologize to the fans who were disappointed that they didn't get the Batman they wanted, 
But he also said, let me, let me bring him, let me bring him up. Uh-huh, let's see. Ah, uh, let's see. I felt I disappointed a lot of older fans by being too conscious of the family aspect. Now I owe the hardcore fans the Batman movie they would love me to give them. Uh-huh. Uh, well, he pretty much... I know I found it somewhere. I mean, at least he Here we go. Up. There we go. Here we go. He says that he was under pressure from toy companies and Warner Brothers management to deliver a family-friendly film and admits he went too far in that direction but takes full responsibility for the end result and at one point during the interview flat out apologizes to fans that were disappointed. It's like... Way to own up to your mistakes. Yes. Yeah. Unlike, unlike Paul Feig. Remember that, Ian? <laughs> or, you know, Disney. Disney. <laughs> Drives me, buddy. Oh gosh. Let's not let's not bring puns here, dude. You're gonna summon the pungent master. Pungent? Who stinks? <laughs> <laughs> Which is another problem with this movie. Puns. <laughs> I, I know oh, Arnold oh, oh, Let me. Oh, let oh, me. oh, Ian. Ian. <laughs> Ian is eager to, to, to bring this up. Go ahead, Ian. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm afraid my condition has made me grow cold to your pleas of mercy. You want to know you want to know what sucks? I use that clip in my ghostwriter review because the villain because one of the mooks says the exact same thing and when I saw that in the theaters, all I could think about was that. <laughs> <laughs> You know what killed the dinosaurs? Oh, the Ice Age! Why does this movie exist? It, I know why it exists. This is a rhetorical question, but why? A, because they want, because Warner Brothers was more interested in selling toys. That's not uh, how you do not, it. Ian, even at the time, seven year olds like me existed. Mm -hmm. You want, and you want to know how transparent the movie is about se about selling toys? There's literally a line that Poison Ivy says about how an a, a Poison Ivy action figure is not is is not complete unless it's with hi with him, and it's and she and she means Bane. That movie, the movie is just completely unapologetic of what it is trying to be. I mean, don't get me wrong. Batman Forever had a lot of toys. I mean, I saw the Batmobile, the Batboat, the Bat, the plane, which were freaking awesome. They were freaking awesome. And so were and so were the Batmobile, and so were the Batmobiles, and even the cycle in this one. But it was only awesome because they it was meant to sell toys. Can I just bring up something on that? What they brought. They brought in all these crazy new vehicles and stuff, and they had these weird icicle mobiles for Mr. Freeze and his henchmen. And when I saw that, I'm like, you're going this campy. You couldn't go the extra one step and use snowmobiles. Why? <laughs> if you're gonna go campy and goofy, go all the way. Because that meant because how would because how could how could snowmobiles run on run on uh, solid surfaces when there's no snow? You, you can oh. train. You can attach wheels to the bottom, dude. That's a thing. <laughs> I right. mean, okay. What's what's uh? And, and the funny thing, the funny thing is that Schumacher. Schumacher I mean, he's not only a fan of Batman, but he's made great movies before. Yeah, like Saint Elmo's Fire, and and The Lost Boys, like the quintessential what is like the quintessential '80s vampire movie. When it comes, Good question: to Was this the movie that killed his career? Well, it. I think it made. No, he still he still found work. Actually, his last. 
I mean, he would later make mo he would make the films uh, f uh, Phone Booth. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Eight millimeter with Nicolas Cage. Never seen that one. Oh. And the number twenty three. Okay. Uh huh. So I so I wouldn't say his career is over, but let's just say that if there was a name that his name attached to a comic book movie would have the same reaction to when someone sees the words M Night Shyamalan as a credit. We'll get to that one, viewers. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that one. Much later, though. Oh, yes. Hopefully in about 10 years' time, in, w in which case, well, this show will probably be over by then. Oh, 10 years' time. I bet this will be back in action. God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what all right so anyway yeah the movie is just so over the top essentially the story is we have been going like i don't know how long and we haven't even gotten to the story i mean it's pretty much i think it's what? a story it's a story that could pretty much fill an adam west episode for what story it's like a bare bone minimum yeah pretty much uh well, let's see. Freeze is collecting a button is a bunch of giant diamonds to power an engine that will t that will allow him to freeze the world freeze the world over or just freeze Gotham. Actually, he wants, to, wants hold to hold the area ransom. Just and let's give let's give Schumacher a little credit. His motivation for doing that is so that he could get money to complete his research to find so that I could find a cure for his. I'd love how he put just funny how he delivers that uh, for his for his wife. So let's give Schumacher some credit that he at least knew why that's that Emmy winning episode of the, of the animated series won an, won an Emmy in the first place. You're talking about Sub-Zero. Not Sub-Zero. I'm just talking about Heart of Ice. Ah. Uh. The movie that actually the not the movie. The episode that changed Mr. Freeze from being just a campy ice villain into a tragic villain. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so Ian, you may not be in have the in-depth lore, but uh, that was, but uh, that version of Mr. Freeze is what me and Tyler are very well, uh, I'll remember it well for. Victor, Victor Freeze was a, was a scientist whose wife did did uh, contracted. A rare okay. deadly, uh, deadly disease. Mm -hmm. So he decided to cryogenically freeze her until he, he could find a cure. But apparently, but uh, his financial backers, no, or at least the company he worked for, realized that he was kind of embezzling money from them, taking like taking like a few hundred dollars out of the tip jar. And so mm. when they when they tried to pull the plug, they end up throwing a bunch of chemicals on him that. Makes his body unable to survive normal temperatures, but but able to but able to survive in sub-zero temperatures. He can literally swim in the Arc in the Arctic in the glacial waters of the Arctic Circle and be fine. I mean, he oh, he's survived. a polar bear. Okay, he could survive the Titanic. Let's just say that he could survive the Titanic. Yeah. Hell, he could he could survive the freaking freaking swim down to the Titanic without a submarine. Exactly. Though I think the decom uh, the compression of the water would kill him. Yeah, probably. And but anyway, oh, his, before but, we get there, viewers, just just know I'm holding back on the science right now, viewers. Uh, it'll come out. It'll come out. Yeah, it'll probably take it'll probably take about half this episode. But then again, will you probably would have taken taken over half of it so anyway yes mr freeze is supposed to be a tragic character who really just wants who's really doing bad things because he wants to save the love of his life yep <sighs> and Maybe. here's where i think schumacher could have at could have at least saved this saved mr freeze's character a little bit i mean at least, i'm kind of going with going the direction of 
you sa- you save the the woman you love, but you can't be with her. She's a, she's a, you are someone who can survive sub zero temperatures. She can't. Here's where I think this is where I think they could have at least saved Mister Freeze and actually and make and take that whole tragic character from the animated series and kind of take their own spin, much like how the animated series took its own spin from the Burton movies. What do you, what do you think, Tyler? Have I broken you? I think I silenced you a bit. No, I'm just wait, waiting for you to be done. <laughs> oh, you no. wound me. All right. So I would like to hear Ian's opinion because he's a noob. Okay. I'm the noob. Oh, ho. Yeah. you just wait, my good sir. This well, is, you, are, um, you are a noob in the in the lore of the Batman. Uh, there's. I I fully agree with what John said. There's what he says on how they could have saved Mister Freeze's character arc. That would have been great. You know, it probably would have made this movie a bit more something that more people would probably return to. Uh, However, I have a big issue with Poison Ivy's character. I'm going to stop you right there because I want to talk about what the biggest issue with this film. You see... I bet I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet if we were to do a pitch meeting, you know, Ryan George, bless yeah, yeah, you with yeah. those movies. I bet if we were to do a pitch meeting, they would say, "Hey, you know what? Make a better Batman movie. Put more villains." But we already had two in the last movie. Make it three. Why three? Because better plots. Yeah. Bullshit! 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 No. Like, if it would just focus on Mr. Freeze, it would have been a better movie. Agreed. However, I would rather, if I had a choice, how about you guys? If you had a choice between picking who your central antagonist, you can only have one out of your three, no Bane, Poison Ivy, and Bruce Freeze, who would you pick? Freeze. I don't know. I think, with, I don't know. I, I think because, uh, the last movie kind of already t- took place in winter. Having a having an ice based having a freeze based villain would feel a little redundant. So I'd probably go, I'd probably go with po- with Poison Ivy, but with much better writing. Yeah. And, shit, honestly, uh, you know, it saddens me what they did to. Okay, so the origin story of Poison Ivy's, I, I don't know. John, was it consistent with the lore? I don't, depending on what you get, depending on what you get, I mean... I remember, I remember there was different origins for her. There's different origins. There's one where she's pretty much just, where she just is a plant lover, she's human. And there's another where she's actually part plant. Yep. So I think. So yeah, she. I think she has. She has about as many. She has as many origins as the Joker. <laughs> but uh, I will never forget the fact that the biggest thing I can remember. This is the weirdest thing. The biggest thing I remember the most vividly is. The cheesiness of the freaking mad scientist lair. <laughs> so out of place. I was like, why is this in a Batman movie as a kid? Like, you know, Batman Forever may have been campy, but it didn't have no <laughs> was lightning flashing across the sky. Oh, so oh, it's Frankenstein. Know. Oh, you want li- you want weird lightning? Why is the lightning green when they establish Arkham Asylum? Hmm. Yeah. The sky is green. 
That's somewhere, in Gotham, somewhere, somewhere in Gotham City is near a toxic waste dump. In the back, of, where is this place? Is it right just outside of Gotham City? Is it like in South America? Where? There, there are places where where some color is okay, and there's somewhere th where it's just odd choices. Again, green sky. <laughs> green skies. And so that's what stuck out the most to me as a kid. And even now we watching it, it, it just makes me laugh because I remember how out of place it felt. It just felt like so I was watching a different movie. I was, when I was a kid, I was like half watching it because I was like eight, because I had a, well, I still have ADD. So, so there would be time. So there, so I'd hear like, I'm afraid you'll have to die. Ah! Oh, that's, the, honestly, I found that science is more entertaining than Poison Ivy. That's true. Oh yeah. By the way, why do I get the, why do I get the feeling that that's kind of what my, what every, a uh, modern internet feminist thinks that a man baby is. You know, when their reaction, you know, so, I respect your opinion. Sadly, I'm not good with rejection. I'm afraid you'll have to die. Mm. Oh, Tyler, oh, by the way, how's that? How's your house and your wife? <laughs> well, fine. Yeah, the house that you built that or that you that you bought with your own <laughs> money with the, with your wife. Uh, doing really good, actually. <laughs> I kind of stole that from you, John. I'm sorry. Yes, you did. Well, I forgot it, so you picked it up. Oh, good. Well, glad that I can find someone who likes a nerd like me. Uh-huh. And that's what we all want. We want to find someone who just loves us for us. Ner nerd, quirks, and or even normal, or even normal C and all. Oh, What's yeah. that? That sounds boring. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but uh, the, the normies get offended by it. Yeah, they can they can stick with their normal boring white job. picket stick... my white picket fence with the, with their something with their cute little dog Scruffy, and the, you know the 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 two children, and it's just like, and then there's me, <laughs> alligators. It's, oh, geez, Tyler, where'd you come from? Did you see that? Did you see that one guy that with the happy face? He was here just a moment ago. I think he just left the room. Oh, he didn't say much, but he left an impression on me, much like no. Bane. Oh God, let's go on the Bane now. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. Let this me was rant. my first. This was actually my first introduction to Bane. Sadly, yes. Little did I realize that Bane is not dumb muscle in any other lore. He's actually and, intelligent. He's the one that broke the bat. Yeah, imagine what imagine what uh, kids who saw the Dark Knight Rises, who or teenagers who like that Bane is stupid. Oh yeah, I'll show you a stupider Bane. <laughs> Bane. And that, yeah, and that. So, suddenly, this doesn't sound so weird now, does it? <laughs> no. It still sounds cool. Yeah. I, I was born in it. Molded by it. That's a I wonder what I'll break first. You or your body? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Maybe Bane had... Maybe Bane has some problems. Maybe he was maybe he was a demoted a little bit, a little bit to sort of like a, sort of like a servant. But hey, at least he was smarter than the dumb ox in this. <laughs> All he, what do you do? What do you do? He just he just didn't. He just forgot to bathe, so he became all green, and all he can say is say is one word at a time. Oh, 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 wait. He's a wait. Pokemon. Remember. He's a Pokemon. What? He's a Pokemon. Remember, you wore a fedora. Oh, he wore, a he wore a fedora? Yeah, imagine how disguising that is. He's wearing his mask with his fedora hat. Oh, yeah. Best disguise ever. 
Mm. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that might work. What's a trench coat? <laughs> well, hey, you can... hey, it worked for the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and hey, he's 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 green. <laughs> hey, connections where you can find them. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that this? That uh, the, this movie wasn't just a toy commercial, but it was just a hodgepodge of all the other things that came before it. I mean, come on. The opening scene is that you have Batman and Robin, they surf through the sky like in the beginning of Power Rangers. You have a big green guy who's, who's disguises, disguises a fedora and trench coat. Ah. <sighs> And you get the, and of course you get the des, the alien designer, the alien designer for much, or you're inspired by mostly the the works of the artists who made the a, the xenomorph an alien. They were inspired by H.R. Giger. Yes. How? How? Schumacher was just a fan. Was just a fan. For no particular. I get, reason. I get that. I'm a fan of his work too, but. I saw nothing like, you know, the biomechanical nature of Giger's work. You should look at the Batmobile in Forever. That one's kind of that one's kind of close to it. Now, I do have uh, some things I want to address. Uh, another Which one thing. is it? Is it the one that we? Is it the one that we had? Is it the one that surprisingly took us this long to get to? Uh, you mean Alfred? Oh, Alfred! Oh, I thought you were talking. Thought we were talking about the other things, like the. I mean, okay, okay. First off, that's a long list, and that's like a <laughs> rabbit hole. We'll have to go down. <laughs> We're all this review is going to be three, four hours long. <laughs> you might have to turn this into a two-parter. Whatever, awesome. dude. <laughs> but but consider this. You know, Alfred, why did you bring your niece into involved into this? Better question is, why did you make your password so easy? I, I thought you were smarter than this. Alfred, did you Listen. plan on your niece becoming Batgirl? Probably. Apparently. Yeah, Probably. And also, it's not like he's using the internet. Yeah. I mean... It's just... Alfred's so weird in this one. Like, and, can you imagine Michael Caine grooming his niece to become Batgirl? You know, predicting, like, Hey, I don't want you to fight crime, but if you do, here's where you can find your suit. Oh, and wait a minute. Well, you want to well, know wait. what that... That's all that came about because apparently he uh, he was trying to find his brother Wilfred. Get it, Alfred Wilfred. <laughs> because for what reasons? Not explained. But I guess it's because he knew he was dying, and so he needed someone to take care of Bruce or to watch over Wayne Manor when he's gone. Gotta keep it in the family. Yeah, but but again, this is something that's just not that's not brought up. Probably because they were saving it for the next movie. That didn't happen. It just became Batman Begins. And yes, Scarecrow was actually supposed to be the next villain. Happy they kept with that for a bit begin. Mm -hmm. Well, that that seems to be the trend. Is that when movies who have a plan that are kind of, that are that end up getting rebooted they always they don't just start from scratch they say they say like okay let's take the idea that they had for the next movie and let's just use that for this one but we'll just change it up a bit you mean Same amazing spider-man with the lizard and and spider-man homecoming with the with the vulture yep but you know you know the weirdest thing that always bugged me as a kid? <laughs> besides, besides the fact, besides uh, looking, you know, looking back and going, why did I ever watch this movie? Besides that, I was like, Batman gets his ass handed to him by Poison Ivy. Yep, this new girl dressed up as a bat kicks her ass easily. 
Eh, well, it wouldn't have been. Well, it wouldn't have been right. It wouldn't have been right. It would have been misogynistic of a, I mean, a woman you... beating a man beating on a woman. I mean, consider this. At this age, I just saw three Batman movies. Batman has defeated every one of his foes. You Batman. know. And you know, even in the animated series, Batman has beaten Poison Ivy not be not by beating her, but by outsmarting her. Exactly. So, and am that, I growing up with the animated series and watching this, I'm like, Bruce, Batman's dumb in this. Mm -hmm. And <sighs> so, like, it just kind of came out of nowhere. It was like, it was like the excuse for a cat fight that I wasn't aware of. I was watching as a kid. Yeah. Ne neither was I. What was her opening line as Batgirl? I you're can't about even remember to, it You're about to become compost. Oh my god, more puns. Uh -huh. Um. Uh, That's the... Brain that, self that was the, that was the best you could come up with? Okay. No, I'm just thinking that. I mean, in my line of work, you know what we use for fertilizer and compost? What? Animal fur, animal uh, waste droppings. Bingo. Well, that, well, that be, well, that be, you know, that would actually be something. Let's just, let's just uh, put uh, Dr. Malcolm's line on top of Batgirl's. Now that is one big pile of shit. There you go. Hmm. Oh yeah, honestly, well, honestly, I was excited when Batgirl showed up as a kid because, again, the animated series. She that was actually the that was actually the best Batgirl in, uh, introduction. Uh, yeah, but here's the problem. So, I might be odd. What, I wish I could show you a video of me as a kid because I was the oddest kid you'll ever have met. I did not like this Batgirl because, for the stupidest but yet simplest reason, it did not look like the animated series Batgirl. Like, she doesn't have red hair! I would have... Yeah, I would have... I thought something similar. It's like, where's the ears? And she has them brief... She has them briefly. You know, when... The, you know, during the, during the final act. But then she just discards it. It's like, no! Keep them on! You look cool. You look like a. You actually look like you're part of the Bat Family. Yeah, but it was just. It's just. I love looking at the kid menta kids mentality when they don't like something. And it's just for the simplest reasons because it's just kind of a, adorable. Mm -hmm. And looking back, it's kind of embarrassing because I'm like, wh like, why don't you like this? She has. Like the one in the cartoon had red hair. This one had blonde hair. It's not right. You <laughs> sound so stupid. I know. <laughs> Tyler, you sound like a lot of the fan base from the Jurassic Park fans right now. What? In what part? Oh, there's 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 quite a lot of uh, drama going on in the Jurassic fandom right now. I'm not gonna. I, I have no idea what's going on. I try to keep out of fandoms because I find fandoms stupid at this point. Yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much embarrassing. It's embarrassing what? to say you're part of no. I'm saying it's embarrassing to to say that yes, I'm a part of this fandom when it's like they're like every fandom seems to be having drama. Sonic, Steven Universe, anime, Star yep. Wars, Star Star Wars, Star Trek, the CW. This is why I like to befriend people, not fandom. Anyway, I got a question for you guys, since you guys are a bit more knowledgeable in the lore. Yes. Wasn't Batgirl supposed to be like Commissioner Gordon's daughter? Yes. Oh, yes. I thought I, I this, remembered. This something. is the other thing that well, this is what actually confused me. And 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 of course, it was like we clearly know that the name that her she's supposed to be Barbara Gordon. I thought that too. The th the yep. daughter. I was like, wait. So, the police commissioner's daughter is also the niece of the Wayne's butler. So, who's 
Is this some kind of weird family tree thing? Hey, hey, it would be the weirdest saying, but hey. It would kind of, it would explain Mm -hmm. why she has an American accent instead of a British accent. Yeah, it would. Uh, Hold on, guys. I gotta fix my phone. It's dying. Hmm. Oh, that's not gonna work. (laughs) You keep on chatting, boys. I will just gotta bring my phone back to life! Life! Life, do you hear me? Give my creation life! I'm pretty sure that mad scientist was trying to channel Gene Wilder. Ah! (laughs) It's alive! (laughs) I mean, seriously, fellow maniacs, bidding... Ooh, what a dramatic shot, Tyler. Thank you. Bidding begins. Hello, <laughs> darkness, my old friend. I come, come to, talk to talk with you, you again. again. Because a vision softly creeping. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> While this Batman film got me singing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, so, uh, what the, okay, we were talking about Barbara, uh, Barb, not Barbara, uh, Barb, <laughs> yes, the, not Barbara Gordon, Barbara Pennyworth, hey. God, that's so, that does that's not, the worst mean. name, Barbara, Pe- Barbara Pennyworth, Bar- Barbara Pennyworth, I can say that it's, sa- well, it's, doesn't sound weird, but at the same time, it just doesn't sound right. Uh, no, it doesn't sound right. In fact, it's not, it feels like an insult. <laughs> it's, I Gosh, kinda... Tyler, it's such a Barbara Pennyworth. You're right, what? it does. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds it's like, like she's an insult. worth less than a penny. <laughs> All right, so what? What could have been the reason to bring in Batgirl? Could it have been probably to sell more toys? Could it Probably. have been? Could it have been equal? Could it have been you know diversity and inclusion? Ah, uh, I, I don't know. It's the nineties. No, it was, it's the night. No. It was the night. It was the nineties. Maybe it was trying to do you know that whole you know that whole you know that you know that whole female empowerment thing that's still going on. Okay, okay. I, I think we're looking a bit too deeply into this because a it's the nineties and so. No, nothing changed much in the 90s. B, no. I'd say it's to sell toys because, hey, you get more characters, more toys, more toys, more sales. And then again, if you do have a, if you have a girl as a toy, that means more, that girls will buy the toys. Therefore, more profit. Exactly. Also, Halloween costumes. Girls can dress up as Batgirl. Ah, and Poison yeah. Ivy. There so, you go. Although, why, although, te- although I have to ask, why would you want to p- dress up as that poison ivy? And so, guys, to to quote a fellow uh, director, merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. <laughs> yep, that's pretty. That is pretty much what this whole movie w- movie was. And the, yeah, that's merchandising is supposed to be where the real money for the movie is made. Except this movie never made any money. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. Well, let's, let's critique some other aspects, like the tumultuous partnership between Batman and Robin. Like, I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Wait, oh, that, oh, you didn't mean that type of partnership. Yeah. You just, <laughs> oops. Yeah. Wait, I'm, no, wait, I'm lost. What kind of partnership are you talking about? Just them being crime fighting duos? Yeah, and Robin being a whiny little. Mm, he wasn't too. Well, he wasn't too whiny, but. <laughs> I want to fight crime! <laughs> Nostalgia Critic, I curse you. I can never get that voice out of my head now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but. It, well, I don't. Yeah, I don't think there really was much of a. There was much of a character arc. 
there was never one to begin with. Like, yeah. did anybody have arc? a character arc? <laughs> okay, first off, Robin acts the same as he does in the freaking Batman Forever. I never saw him change. Mm hmm. Like, he never had an arc to begin with. That's other true. than, okay, okay, yes, I know how to defeat a girl by having fake lips. And that, and I'm pretty sure that's because, and I'm pretty sure that's because Batman gave him the idea. Yep. I'm a, I mean, the whole story could have been a, the end of the last movie is that they just, is that they just stopped a group, they just stopped, stopped a duo of villains together for the first time and they were successful. Now the second one, can you just keep on doing that? No, there's got to be some conflict to it. Why but, the why the hell did Poison Ivy have to be that be that conflict? Yeah, actually, oh man, I just saw something. You know the worst thing about Poison Ivy? Not even because of her character, but how did she got defeated? Ticked into her own plant. I mean, how was that really defeated? How? She controls plants. How does that trap her? <laughs> you want to know the stupidest? All right, the science is busting out. You uh -oh. know what the stupidest thing about poison ivy is? The fact what? that she partnered that she partners with her elemental opposite. Well, yes, but it's the one thing that really makes her a quote unquote threat. And it's just completely wrong. Uh huh. Okay. What is it? How does she, how does she kill people? Oh, she transfer. She can transfer poison to her enemies through lip contact. Yes. Yeah, it said in the movie that it was like the venom of some snake or something like that. Um, I don't know if it, no. It just said venom. Honestly, yeah. when I thought she said venom. venom, I thought she meant that super soldier thing. Yeah. Which, is, which adds more to the confusion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but going off of that, if it is, you know, like standard venom that you can get from a snake by milking a snake, her entire way of killing people wouldn't work. Venom is a poison. It is not a poison. It's a protein. You can drink venom just fine and you digest it normally. Hmm. But she's not injecting venom into their mouth, but it's more of a contact base. Yeah, that, you can dunk your hand in venom. It's not going to kill you. It only harms when it goes into the bloodstream. Well, she was yeah. she was a character that was created before that type of before that science was even known. I don't care. And also, again, back to the anime series, she used pheromones. She didn't really kill people. Well, they tried doing that in this one, and it, they kind of, it, they it, say they want to do a family-friendly thing, right? And then they do this. Oh, yeah, and then they, can, oh, yeah, and then they kind of do this kind of date auction thing where, yeah, where men pretty much bid, uh, bid on women to just take them out on a date or, or whatever else the night has planned for them. And thus, we finally bring in that bloody credit card! <laughs> oh god i thought we weren't gonna mention that it took us this long to get around to it we weren't really going to mention it but we're but the fact that this is supposed to be a family friendly movie and they put that in the scene i mean yeah uh, okay. some kid i mean most ki miss most kids are pretty much are just hyped up on sugar that they're that all they're really just going is look at all the pretty colors I mean, first question, how does a bat credit card work? Does Batman own a company that charges interest? In fact, what is the interest on that credit card? In fact, wouldn't he be able to track who he is by based by looking at his credit history? Not un like, not unless he actually like, not unless he actually signed Okay, what's your name? First name, Bat. Last name, Man. I mean, this is so stupid on so many levels that I I, after rewatching it like last week, I'm like, oh 
God, this is so stupid. Batman having a credit card would blown his identity faster than, than he can say a two. I bless you. Thank you. Any well, when I was a kid, I really thought nothing of it, but when I rewatched it, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. White man put, has Why did they put the cast why did they put the kaching sound effect in there? Where does it does it does his belt automatically just just have an automatic sound effect machine whenever he pulls something out? Credit card. Cha ching I mean, to be fair, imagine going to the drive thru in the Batmobile. I want some food. I want a big bad care. Cha ching it's, I'm more worried about the people behind the Batmobile when if he goes through the drive thru. Oh god, that's right. They're the freaking rocket on the back. <laughs> Those it's, poor I hope people have freaking, car insurance. Because to, I don't think it was required dumb. in the 90s to have card insurance. It, it was more of a 2000 thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, when it if it comes to the Batmobile and the drive through, you you need to double the social distance just for your car. Because <laughs> that thing will because that thing will that thing will melt the frame. That's gonna melt your front engine, and then you're gonna be stuck with a lot of cars honking at you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. A, a rocket turbine just melted my engine. Nance, go around. And, and go around. Don't, hey, don't, don't forget, those. how many windows did he break with that rocket engine? Because those drive through windows and that poor cashier's ears. Oh, jeez. It's, well, that's that. one person going deaf. Well, I'm already there, Tyler, so, man. <laughs> it's, it's like it's uh hello hello i'm ready to order what <laughs> what and this is why i love to nitpick this movie because as stupid and insulting to my lore it is i can look at it and just nitpick what it does stupidly to apply the logical sense so it's aliens colonial marines yeah, I just like looking at it pretty much the same way I look at I look at the room and that Sharknado. I look, Sharknado, the Star Wars holiday special is how did something how something did something that started so great fall this low that that someone thought this was a good idea? Oh my god! I mean, the whole movie's hilarious and. You know what we, you know what we haven't even touched on one of the biggest issues, the one that's like in the very first full minute of the movie. I was hoping we were not going to mention that, but if you insist, <laughs> well, it actually, I'm actually going to make it very relevant. Uh, yes, this and the, and Batman Forever is notorious for for the bat suits being. Very spicy. 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 I'm talking they even about... reference it in this movie, don't they? Like, didn't Poison Ivy say, like, yes. get the girl going when the yes. suits are that anatomically correct? Yes. Bat nipples and bat asses. And you know what? When Bat butts. Bat butt. Bat. <laughs> now, bat. I gotta bring up something funny because I noticed this as a kid. I'm like, why do the Batman and Robin they have a better shots of nipples and ass, but when it comes to Batwoman, it was like less pronounced. I, like it wasn't sexualized. Oh, it was. I think it was. It was sexy en enough when I, you know, after rewatching it. But, but this is kind of. And so this, we've all heard. Most of us have heard that Schumacher is is, is gay. Yep. Well, I tried finding out. I didn't. I got no confirmation. No confirmation that he's that he's gay from his Wikipedia, not even from his IMDb page. However, what I do know, he was a very promiscuous bisexual. Hmm. So what? So whether or not he he was gay, he did he definitely admired bodies, which 
definitely explains why why even that even bad girl got got a few got a few of the sexy shots. Of course, yeah, so they weren't yeah, of course they weren't as pronounced as the beginning of Bat uh, Batman Robin. In fact, I think Sh I think Schumacher might have favored Robin a little bit because I to I told you this Tyler, that when it zoom when it zooms in to fill the ass in the entire frame, it looked like the butthole was in the center was in the center. And I'm <laughs> and I'm and I'm kind of going like, "Okay, Joel, you want to bring it back a bit otherwise this is going to turn into a colonoscopy." Yeah, bring it back, buddy. Bring it back. I thought this was supposed to be a family movie. <laughs> you got a family picture. Yes, this is about as family friendly as Son of the Mask. <laughs> it, well, well I, let me rephrase that. It technically is a family movie because that's probably what was going to happen later. Oh, a bad family. Right. Yep. I and so not exactly what I was going for, but sure, let's go with that. Okay. Okay. So uh, anyway, but anyway, but really, uh, apparently, the real reason why he wanted the suits like that, Schumacher, is that apparent. He says that he kind of admired Greek statues. I I have heard that. I've yes. heard of that. And after hearing that, when I heard when I read that, I was like, oh my god, I can actually start seeing that in the movie. How many shots has to have like either either an like an Atlas statue holding something or or an arm with this? I mean, I mean, the, in the middle of the movie, they're dr they are actually driving down the arm and hand of some giant statue. Why are there so many giant statues in Gotham City? That's what I was wondering. Building them all. And one, is, and one is even close to the street. That looks like a safety hazard right there. I mean, Next it's question a, is, who's building them? I know. Uh, yeah, this... Yeah, so I think the movie... Yeah, if this... Schumacher really wanted to have, like... Gr wanted statues that emulated the, gr the Greek statues in this movie. And there are a lot of them in there. Not that I'm... Not... Uh, not faulting him for that. It's just... I think you didn't... I think you should have at least put him in some place where they wouldn't be in the way... I mean, also, also that tell the observatory, you know, that is held by the hands. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm scared of even going up the height of heights in normal building. You would not. You couldn't pay me to go up there if that's what was holding it up. Not even for a trillion dollars. Not even for all the money in the world, plus interest. Okay, how, how about for every movie in existence? No. Are you sure? Every movie in existence plus behind the scenes features. Plus all of the the lost movies from the nineteen <gasps> twenties. No. Not I'm even here, Tyler. <laughs> no. I said no. I will not go in there. I will not go in there because I know because I know <laughs> the moment that I've gotten that a hurricane gust of wind comes by that, it's going to blow that thing off. Okay. Okay. How about a chance meeting with a resurrected Stan Lee? Drop it, Tyler. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. So, so, yeah. Is Schumacher gay? Don't know. Is he bisexual? Definitely. Does he... Does he does he seem to prefer the male body? It definitely does look that way. I mean, even look at Mr. Freeze's suit. That tell me that does not remind you of Giger. Yeah, yeah. Granted, yeah. So yeah, this movie was panned back in 1997, but I don't know. This look this looks like the kind of movie that would have that would have its defenders now. Probably, yeah. If it was released now, there would be there would be rabid fans trying to defend it, and call and pretty much calling us who say like the writing is stupid as, oh you're you are just horrible phobic and is people. 
I, you're right. You got me, John. I am bad writing phobic. <laughs> just want to point. I mean, don't you agree? Time, don't give me that look. Tyler, don't get. <sighs> Is this a staring contest? No. I'm pretty good at those. Viewers help. <laughs> what? Viewers help. Yes, they do. Oh, no, help but... me. <laughs> Rescue me from these two. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you need rescuing from me? What have I ever done to you? I'm not the one pulling you in all these movies. <laughs> John, was this your idea for this movie or mine? I can't remember. I'm just along for the ride. I can't even re I can't even remember. I, I, I'm kind I can't even remember what I did la what happened last week. In fact, I'm kind of off by a day because I had to go, because I had to go into work on a Sunday. Oof. Mm -hmm. But do we have I anything else to say about this movie? Let's. Well, let's see. We've talked about the. Oh, you know what? I want to talk about the about the about the scene that pretty much sets the tone the tone for this movie, and that is the museum scene. You mean uh, you mean diamond hockey? Yes, the diamond. I mean the diamond hockey. I mean just that. This was a joke that I kind of that I wanted to wanted to say because there is a, that is something that is something that you don't that you don't mock because just describing it is a mockery of itself. Robin, Robin and the, Robin and and uh, let's see. Uh, the skating, ice skate, Let's see. Sk let's see. Skating through a frozen museum, playing playing hockey with a giant diamond. With Eskimo how you, goons. How do you how do you how do you mock that? That it's already a mockery because because that sounds more like the punchline to a joke. And the setup is a bat, a bird, and a snowman walk into a museum. Yeah. No, I think I already seen I've seen a better joke. It was in Tim Burton's first one when Joker entered a museum. Uh oh. Yeah, and yes. And you know. And you know when I, you know, kind of when I first, when I first, before I found out that Schumacher is bisexual, is bisexual, I still th I thought that yes he was gay, and so, you know what I mean? Just look, I mean, when you see the Batman and the Robin logo kind of fly in, and then they just and then they just kind of fu fuse into one, and it's like, oh, oh, kitten. Okay, that kind of takes on a whole new meaning now. It's... Did you just get that? Yes. It's been a long time since I've seen this. Also, then, to, and to add in, and to add insult to in, to add insult to injury, freeze <sighs> deploys a a rocket with a single thruster on the back. A very rounded oblong. Rocket. I, I mean, like, aren't, most, aren't most rockets like that? It went from here to here. From a director <laughs> That's who was generally standard for rocket for I rocket know. takeoff. Yes, but by but by a director who was rumored to be gay. Okay, I'm gonna make a joke. You might be reading a little too much into this, John. I think so. I think so. Especially, I kind of re I kind of realized I did when I found. I kind of realized that when I found out that really he slept with both men and women. Okay. Okay. Let's move on because you know, not nothing about I want to discuss about the personal life of the director, just what he has done with the movie. Okay. How about the campiness? I mean, Adam West Bill here, because I think we already talked about that. I I know it. I mean, yeah, this whole the whole thing seems just comes across as comic booky. I mean, I mean, hell, everyone when they speak, it's always exposition. I mean, even I mean, Freeze even just out loud says what he's what he's going to do. Like then I will fr freeze, I will freeze the world into an icy tomb. 
and then I will pull Batman's heart from his body and feel it freeze in my hands. I was like, I, I ah, a plot point we are we have not talked about. What? How Poison Ivy convinced Freeze that Batman killed his wife. Mm. Did anyone remember um, that? I was hoping to forget that. Thank you for bringing it back to the forefront of my memory. You're welcome. Because that was flimsy. <sighs> that would Re refresh my memory. Know? What are you talking about? Uh, Poison Ivy telling Mr. Freeze that Batman killed his wife. Uh huh. And he takes it at face value. You don't know the Batman too well. No. He just doesn't kill. Yes, Batman doesn't kill. I was gonna say, wouldn't Freeze know that? Exactly. I mean, hello, look at where all the villains are. Arkham Asylum. Mm -hmm. Are any of them dead? Uh, two faces. But Batman didn't kill him directly. In, in just indirectly, yeah. But still. Right, not... But. Then again, he did kill that goon in Batman, Tim Burton. That was Tim Burton, though. He did, and he killed Joker in Tim, in the Tim Burton one. Okay, so this Batman likes to kill, apparently. Why do film, why? Is Nolan the only one that is Nolan the only film director that that uh, that got that understands the idea that Batman doesn't kill? Actually, Batman does kill. That's the funny thing. It depends on the iteration of your comic. Okay. But no, we didn't know that. Since this is, but since this is, this was based on the animated series. Yeah, so at, to us at that time, he wouldn't have killed. Mm -hmm. Continuity? What's that? <laughs> what? What's this continuity thing you're talking about? I keep. I, mean, I try to find it in the dictionary, but all I keep finding is a hole. I mean, continuity. I mean, I woke up one day and looked dark and gloomy, and now I wake up the next night and it's all bright and pink. <laughs> it's the with a lot of lights. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and, there, and there's three statues holding up buildings. And we got a what and we got an ice man who's and a, we got an ice man whose hideout is in an ice cream factory. What? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is this is the funniest context because I work in the ice cream factory. Yes, it, it looks nothing like that. What? You don't have icicles hanging off of everything? Uh, Ian, can you tell can you tell me what the scientific basis is for when cold air is suddenly introduced into it into an area, and then all of a sudden hot air is? Does it really collapse? Does it really make people collapse and cough violently like it did to those bumbling cops? I think I literally heard someone say, "My lungs." <laughs> I heard my lungs are freezing, but no, that's not at all what happened. It generally tries to reach an equilibrium. Uh, quick question, uh, Ian. When you're frozen rock solid like ice and suddenly rapidly thawed, does that not do any damage to your body whatsoever? Oh, so frozen? Yeah. Not the movie, just the, just the act. No, that's what I'm referring to. Oh. Like, no. Well, <laughs> yeah, that uh, unless you happen to be an earthworm or some other similar organism, if you freeze and are rapidly thawed, you die. Actually, you're already dead. Mm. So all those people in Gotham, including the dog that was peeing on the fire hydrant, and Robin, and Robin, the, and Robin in the beginning, <laughs> and Robin in the beginning, yeah, you don't have you know eleven minutes to you know unfreeze someone. If they're frozen solid like that, they're dead. Jesus. I was, I was like, hey, hey, Batman, your partner's a ghost. You've been, you're <laughs> talking with a ghost the entire movie. 
That would have been a uh, what a twist. Now that now that, that, been... that would have saved Batman and Robin. Hey, what okay. just is... <laughs> that he was that, that two years before Night Shyamalan's Sixth Sense. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, what do you? Th oh, jeez. Sh to Schumacher, Schumacher, when it comes to to Batman, uh, it's always behind the curve, never ahead of it. Yep. Can we direct a Batman movie? I don't know what else. Can I am not. I am not touching one. And I mean, for I think for me, the Dark Knight and Batman eighty nine. You know, despite its silliness, I mean, I thought that I thought the original, I thought even the Burton Bat movies were 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 silly. The Schumacher ones are silly. Er, I mean, seriously, when you look at when you, but they're still silly. They're still silly. I mean, but for me, Batman eighty nine and the Dark Knight are pretty much the epi the epitome of good Batman movies right now and it'd be and it'd be hard to try to make one just like that just as it's kind of hard to reinvent the wheel it's, that doesn't mean yeah. it's impossible i mean just look at what happened with captain america remember the 90s captain america compare yeah. that with uh, the first avenger movie mm -hmm. so much better oh absolutely or uh, or for and honestly, like, compare this. Batman has so many iterations, it's not even funny. He has more oh iterations gosh, yeah. than Superman, more than Spider Man. He practically has the most iteration in any superhero movie in existence. Yeah, there's the campy one, there's the ultra violent, muscly uh, kind. There's the. Talking... What? Oh, sorry. I was like, you're talking about Ben Affleck there? No, I'm talking about The Dark Knight Returns. Ah. Uh, the, I'm I'm going like comic book wise. There's the uh, there's the you know there's the dark there's the dark and brood the brooding kind. But but yeah, I mean I can understand why some pe why some people were disappointed from Batman and Robin. Because, uh, it's, and maybe even Batman Forever, because they th because they liked uh, Batman and Batman Returns, they thought that was a, that was an interesting take on the character, and that what Schumacher did was kind of like in the was kind of like the reverse of it. Yep. But you know, there are some things in Batman and Robin that I like that. I think would have been okay, would have been okay, even in, uh, even in any of the other iterations, like, oh, geez, I don't know when they just when when they find out who Batgirl is, you know, it's like we got to get those light locks changed. She knows our secret. Guess we'll just have to kill her. Yep, we'll kill her later. But right now we got work to do. I mean, I know that probably wouldn't. I mean. Bruce Wayne wouldn't say make light of something like that, but it's kind, of, but it's it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to have like give Batman a little bit of levity. Yeah, I mean a little bit of a little bit of comedy is good, even in some of the, even some of the in even in some of the dark ones. Hell, Batman pretty much, pretty much wrote the book on dark comedy in comic book movies. No. The first one. Now, John, do you believe George Clooney is the definitive Bruce Wayne? Just Bruce Wayne, not Batman. Mm -hmm. The definitive Bruce Wayne. Think of that. Like, you no, know, the so, public persona of Batman going out like a rich playboy, which <laughs> George Clooney does have that. Yeah. Because your competition yeah. is your competition is Michael uh, Michael Keaton. Is, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, Christian, Christian, Adam Christian, Bale, Christian Bale, Adam West, and, and ben, ben Affleck. Affleck. I'd say it would be kind of be a tie. It would kind of be well, I don't know. I think I was gonna say it's a tie between George Clooney and Adam West, but that's because usually Adam West he says all I, I didn't have to say I'm Batman. 
I just had to show it up and everyone knew. I would say it's Ben Affleck and George Clooney. George Clooney and I, uh, Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne. Okay, that's right. I have not seen uh, Batman v Superman since it was in the theaters, nor have I seen either version of Justice League yet. So I don't really know that persona. I do like the chemistry between him and Diana, which sort of reminds me of the cartoon Justice League that we grew up with. But I'd say as I as the Playboy Bachelor, I'd have to go with George Clooney. Sort of yeah. like how you sort of like how you go with Toby Maguire as the geek as Peter Parker. Makes a better Peter Parker. Maybe not so good as Spider-Man. Yeah. And like, okay. One of the things I do, like, I, I Let's go with good things. Let's go with good things. Let's challenge ourselves, dear guys. Let's challenge ourselves. What are the good things about this movie? I'll start first. The suits. Mm. Costumes. Because... You, you mean even the bat nipples? I mean, excluding bat nipples, the silver Batman suits. Oh yeah, that one was awesome. If there's one thing Joe knows very well it's costumes designing and it kind of shows i will also have to admit these the sets are impressive I oh mean, yeah i mean there's not very many cgi so most of it was actually practical so this so the vehicles those those were real this batman sliding down a, a brontosaur Campy, but still real. Still, still real. Flintstones territory. Flintstones territory. I know, I know. I mean, most. Of, I mean, most of it is real. So, I like that. It, I like the. Pra I like the practical sets. It honestly did feel like it was like it was a completely different world, like something you. It's been, when it's in day when it's in daytime, you see Gotham. You get, see the Gotham streets in daytime. Again, like, there's like uh, the driving scene where you know Nin Ninja Turtle disguise Bane driving. That's, I mean, we see the car. I mean, it looks like a normal street, but at yeah. night, it's a completely different beast. The black lights come on. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, yeah. So Gotham City chain turns into Spencer Gifts. <laughs> <clears throat> Ian, what about you? What's what's something good you can say about this film? I have to agree. It is it's an interesting movie to look at. Um, Arnold, just hearing Arnold's voice. <laughs> okay, okay. First I... off, Arnold makes any movie better by default, for the most part, because Absolutely. he's just funny by yeah, default. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he even even though they totally underutilized him in this movie, it's still great to hear his voice. I actually didn't even know he was in this movie until I heard him speak for the first time. I'm like, wait a minute, is that Arnold? Hold on, hold on. John, I do have to ask this because I did hear rumors that Arnold has to take vocal uh, lessons to keep his accent. I well, I would not be surprised by that. I uh, I've heard I've heard. Uh, oh, what, oh, damn! I'm I'm forgetting his name. Uh, oh, what what what's it? What's his name? The bad guy from uh, Fifth Element, who played Commissioner Gordon in the in the no, in the Dark Knight trilogy. Gary Oldman? That, Gary Oldman, yes, that's his name. God, I can't How you forget that. There's so many, so many names I need to remember. <laughs> All right, anyway. Anyway. Anyway, uh, I heard that Gary Oldman also has to have coaches to remind him what his normal accent is because he's like so, he's like so busy, he hasn't that he 
playing characters in different accents so, on a constant basis. So it's, I mean, it's weird, but not far-fetched. I, it's probably mostly not, the I'm probably not as much now since he's not really doing much acting now. Oh yeah, but, but it's mostly like just to keep his you know Arnold Schwarzenegger accent that that accent everyone knows him by. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Schwarzenegger. That's the brand name. So can you imagine if he wasn't talking like his usual self, like Arnold as Mr. Freeze, instead of talking like kind of like us guys? <laughs> Would that make the movie better or worse? I don't know. Mm. I just think of... I don't know. I think if I... I don't know. It just reminds me of a clip I saw of Hercules Visits New York, or Hercules in New York, which was Arnold's first movie. You hear him actually speak, he can't act yet. Sadly, he he can't act yet. So we had to have so we had to be dubbed over by someone. It's weird. But that it is weird. Although not it's even weirder than the Terminator 3 deleted scene. That exp that explains why do the Terminators look like Arnold? And Talk it turns to the hand. And Ar and Arnold actually, and the fact that Arnold is actually overdubbed by is overdubbed by someone. And yet it sounds a little nat it sounds a little natural for some reason. But in kind of a reverse thing, one of the, one of the characters actually is dubbed over it in <laughs> with his voice when they go like don't don't really know much about the voice. We could fix it. I'm serious, yeah. Ian. YouTube, YouTube that Terminator Three deleted scene. It's all right. I've seen Terminator Three. I never heard of this deleted scene. I'll find it. It's kind of funny. Also, almost as funny as the fact that yesterday Nostalgia Critics review of Terminator Salvation comes up, and he and he plays in and he plays the clip from Batman and Robin. And I just and I just realized, oh yeah, we got to do that. We're reviewing this now. Yep. <laughs> Holy crap, we're going. We're almost going at two hours strong here. Really? <laughs> we are. We are, aren't we? Uh, that. Ah, uh, but I, you know, I miss reviewing movies like this where we could actually just get a conversation going. Oh, I know. Um. <laughs> Funny enough, I'm going off of memory here. You haven't watched it yet. I thought you were doing that. I know. Dude, I, I had to use the YouTube version of Nostalgia Critic because I can't, I don't have one on Netflix. You could have rented it on YouTube. Dude, I don't have, like, I don't want to rent it on YouTube. Why are you renting movies? You steal that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but all, why yeah. would you see, why why would you steal something that's worthless? Exactly. <laughs> why would I why would I want to rent Batman and Robin? Imagine how that looks on my freaking transaction list. Someone at the bank is gonna look at it like you rented Batman and Robin for two dollars. This isn't even worth fifty it's, cents. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yes, it's an awful movie, but. Like I said, I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for how stupid it was. The same way I, it's a, I, for me, it's a so bad it's good. Sort of like, like the room. It's like, oh my okay. God. So Alien Resurrection, got it. Yes. <laughs> it's a, it is the Alien Resurrection of the Bat, of the Batman, night of the Batman lineup. You know, it, saddens me that we have to have a version of, of a Batman movie that's Alien Resurrection. It's, it's kind of we, sad if you talk about it like that. I think it's sad that we have to have an Alien Resurrection. And they came out the same year, too! Yeah. That's right, they did. Okay, so we got Alien Resurrection, we got Batman and Robin, and the same year, we got Lost World. I think that was the only Satan. What is it with ye what is it with the years ending in the decades ending in seven that just seem that seems to scream out bad luck? 
90 for movies 90 97 uh Bat batman and robin and alien resurrection 2007 fantastic four rise of the silver surfer spider-man 3 ghost rider what happened in 2017 i don't know i think the only thing that i think the only comic book movie that kind of that was actually or at least or fantasy movie that sci-fi fantasy movie that was able to escape that was something from the marvel movies well they release one like every year yeah but even then they've had to, but even then they've had a few stinkers captain marvel <sighs> all right well any I, th I think we're about done here, guys. <laughs> uh, yes. All right, all, righty, all right, gentlemen. Let's give our ratings out of ten. Batman yeah. and Robin. It. Batman and Robin. It is. It is a. It is a train wreck. A very colorful, glorious train wreck. That I think. Uh, I think uh, the more you distance yourself from from it and from all the hate, it's actually quite enjoyable. And how terabad it in how terabad it is. So I give it uh, five bat butts out of ten. Oh, by the way, John. Yes. The quote Arnold. Um, but what I said earlier, I lied. <laughs> Yes, I actually did, unfortunately, read that movie. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> hey, what? the stuff I did for you, man. It's going to look embarrassing <laughs> on my resume. I give it four bat nipples out of ten. Well, you were waiting. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I mean, this so, is the first time I've seen it. it it's bad. It's weird. It's strangely neon colored for Gotham. Which it's got, should be the thing. I was gonna say, yeah. It It's one of those movies that you honestly like I said, you get together with friends and you pick it apart while you're watching it. I gotta give it four bat bugs out of five. Oh man, I, I was hoping you were say four bad puns. Oh, bad, but <laughs> bad. Fine, four. Uh, no, I'll give it four ice puns out of ten. There we go. <laughs> and they're not voiced by <laughs> Arnold, so you can't. Even... Oh, that hurts. Oh. Ow. <laughs> okay. So... Well, looks like this review kind of took a lot out of Tyler. He's he really wants to he wants to fall asleep, kind of recharge <laughs> recharge from this this anal blast of Dookie. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, I think what should we do for what should we do for the next time? Should we do another bad movie that's kind of less bad than Batman and Robin? Um. Feedy. This is coming out in April, so honestly, I would like to review a good movie. I know we've, one. We've, we've done plenty of good movies. You just weren't around for them. But you did Terminator Two. Yes. No, not yet. Actually, we're saving that for later. We are because I've rewatched it and I got so much to say about it. Oh yeah. We're doing that this summer, dude, for the 30th anniversary. Spoiler alert, viewers. <laughs> okay, good movies. Good movies. Um, hey, we can all try to watch the Snyder Cut. No. <laughs> what? You don't want to watch four hours? We might have to save that for we might have to save that for later. Um uh, I thought we were gonna try to at least do bad movies, cause uh, more bad movies this year. More bad movies. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Actually, before oh. we figure that out, let's just let's just okay. Okay, Ty Tyler is in bed. He is. He cannot do this anymore. The badness of batman and robin has completely robbed him of all sense of, of life at least for the day so he needs to recharge <laughs> so 
until next time on Nirvana Podcast, uh, this is John Murphy. <laughs> that's, <Nothing. laughs> that's Tyler Tyson. And this is Ian Benoit. And we'll see you all next time. And hopefully I will have still have all four limbs because I'm going back in with the Gators. I hope I'll be awake next time. We don't even know if you'll be here next time. So shut up, Tyler. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes.